Hello everyone, welcome to Urbanscape Bangalore and in this episode we will look at a big plant literally. The bird's nest fern or otherwise called Asplenium nidus which is an epiphytic species of fern. This is native to most parts of Asia including India. This is also found in Australia. This is called the bird's nest fern because the leaves arise from the center to form a nest-like structure. There are many cultivars of this plant. You can get smaller sized ones if this size intimidates you. The fronds can grow up to 59 inches. You can see this black midrib that highlights the glossy green of the fronds really well. You can see this wavy pattern in most of the nest ferns. The plant collects water and organic matter in this black structure called leaf rosette. They can be grown on top of big trees or can be grown as a terrestrial plant which most home gardeners do. So the variety that I have could be either the Nidus or the Australiacicum. They look so similar that it's hard to differentiate. These are edible plants and ferns do not produce flowers and they primarily propagate from spores. Spores are reproductive cells found on ferns. They are like dust that get transported by water or wind. They are found on the undersides of the fronds. If you see browning under the fern, that's not some disease, but they are just spores. Now let us look at repotting this. So I'm using a big clay container. You must remember that for a big fern like this, you need a wider container than a deep one because the ferns have shallow root systems. But since I have this, I'm just going with it. So for the potting mix, you must use an organically rich mix. So I'm using some 50% cow dung and compost along with 50% sand and garden soil. In addition to this, you can use charcoal, coconut husks, etc. to replicate the epiphytic environment you find this plant in. Remove the plant carefully and you can see even with this size, the plant is not root bound. That's how shallow their root system is. Carefully place it in the center and backfill. Always water your plants after repotting. Now let's look at the growing conditions of this plant. Sunlight. This will not take full sun, so give it part sunlight to shady conditions. If you're growing this in a balcony, an east-facing side would be ideal. If you're growing this indoors, a southwest-facing window will be great. Watering. Like all ferns, this likes consistent moisture when outdoors and when you grow this indoors, you can allow some period of dryness in between watering. While watering, avoid watering the center and water around the fronds like this. So if you live in a warm country, then water every day during summer and reduce watering during winters. Overwatering and underwatering can kill the plant. Humidity. Since this is a tropical plant, keeping its leaves wet can do wonders to the plant and will keep the fronds looking shiny. So spray the leaves with water once every week when indoors and thrice a week when outdoors. Growing medium. So you can hang it on a tree if you have a big garden. You can just use coconut husks, some compost and use a twine thread to grow it on trees. Or you could go the terrestrial way and follow the method as elucidated above. Also, they are not parasitic and they do not feed on their host plants, so don't worry. Next will be fertilizer. This loves organic matter, so if you're growing this outdoors, add compost twice every month and you can use seaweed fertilizer once every month if you're growing this indoors. Fertilize this during summer to rainy months and avoid fertilizing during the winter months. Cold tolerance. This is not cold tolerance, so give it ample warmth during the winter months in cold countries. Also, an AC room would not be an ideal place to grow this plant. Air circulation. Since this is an epiphyte, you can imagine how much wind this must be getting. So if you're growing this indoors, ensure that you open the windows for some good old natural air circulation. Pests and diseases. Normal garden pests like mealybugs, slugs, whiteflies could attack this plant, but if given proper air circulation and water, I think this plant can fight off pests with a plump. Bacterial blight can occur due to this plant's love for humidity. You could remove the affected frond or use diluted baking soda solution to mitigate this problem. But again, good air circulation and a proper water schedule will be enough to avoid this problem. So folks, with the addition of this fern, I think I'm going to become an avid fern collector in the coming years. There is something about these prehistoric plants that fascinates me and I'm sure you feel the same too. 
If there's one foliage plant that I don't mind having in abundance, it would be the fern, all and sundry. So with this, we have come to the end of yet another episode of Urbanscape Bangalore and I really hope you've enjoyed this particular program. Additionally, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. The links are given below. And remember, to grow slow is to grow well. Thank you for watching and until we meet again, a very warm goodbye.